Welcome to this video on conductance and resistance. In a previous video we looked at five key quantities charge, current, voltage, power and energy and in this video we're going to consider these two new quantities as well conductance and resistance. Now it's important to realize that conductance and resistance are not the same things as these two terms below conductivity and resistivity but conductivity is what leads us to conductance and resistivity is what leads us to resistance the two uh, pairs are linked as it were so I've said here that um, conductivity which is given by the the Greek letter Sigma uh, that symbol there next to it um, is measured in Siemens per meter or S over M and Resistivity, which is denoted by the, the Greek letter rho, which is kind of like a curly letter P, um, is, is measured in ohm meters. Now, these quantities are properties of materials. Now, materials will either allow the flow of, of current, the flow of charged particles, uh, in which case they're very conductive, they have high conductivity, or they're going to be um, very resistive to the flow of charged particles. They're not going to allow charged particles to flow, in which case they have high resistivity. And the two are opposites, as it were. So something with high conductivity has low resistivity, and, and a material with high resistivity has very low conductivity. But when we're talking about a specific component, we're not too bothered about the material properties. We just want to know its specific conductance or its specific resistance. So there's two uh, new quantities that we're going to consider, these two conductance and resistance, which are linked. And the letter G denotes conductance. And conductance is measured just in Siemens, S. Whereas resistivity gives rise to this quantity resistance, which we give the letter R. And resistance is measured in ohms, which is the Greek symbol omega. So in this video, what we're going to try and do is take some examples of materials of certain shapes and sizes, and given their conductivity, we're going to try and work out their conductance. And likewise, we're going to take some examples of materials and given their resistivity, we're going to try and work out their resistance. So let's start with conductance. And the formula for conductance is displayed at the top there. Uh, G equals sigma A over L, or sigma multiplied by A over L. And We'll talk about what, what these terms mean in just a second, but it's probably best illustrated with an example. So we're going to consider a, a given sort of material, and we're going to try and work out its conductance. So in our example here, let's imagine that we have a piece of wire. So it's a circular piece of wire, and I'll try and draw some kind of, um, some kind of diagram. There's my circular piece of wire, and it's not a very good diagram, but let's say that we know the length of this particular piece of wire let's say that the length um, we can mark on there as l and let's say that we also know the diameter of this piece of wire so as well i'll mark on the diameter d and let's say that we're, we're given these values let's say that the 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 value of d in this case is three millimeters so the diameter of this piece of wire is is only three millimeters and let's say that the length is two meters so it's a two meter long piece of wire my diagram is obviously not to scale but uh, let's go with it and let's say that we also know the conductivity of this piece of wire so i can say that sigma is equal to 50 times 10 to the 6 Siemens 
permeter. That's the conductivity of this material. And given this information, we're going to try and work out the conductance of this particular wire. So to begin with, let's return to our formula at the top there. G equals sigma A over L. Well, we know what sigma represents. It's the conductivity. We know what L represents. It's the length of the wire in this case. A, on the other hand, represents the cross-sectional area of the wire. Now, we have a little problem here because we aren't told the cross-sectional area. We're told the diameter of the wire. So we need to work out the area before we can do anything else. So in our case, the cross-sectional area of our wire is a circle. And the formula for the area of a circle is A equals pi r squared. Now, here, we're quoted the diameter as being 3 millimeters. But in our formula, we need the radius, so half of that. So it will be 1.5 millimeters. So let's plug that into our equation. So the area is pi multiplied by r squared. Well, in our case, we're going to say 1.5 millimeters. And when we're putting this in the equation, we should put this in standard form. So that's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. And if we calculate that, I uh, get an answer of 7.07 .07 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. So a very small area. Now I can go ahead and work out the conductance G, which we said was equal to sigma area over length. So sigma we know, quoted in the bottom left there, is 50 times 10 to the 6. And we're going to multiply that by this fraction. And on the top of the fraction now, I know the area is 7.07 .07 times 10 to the minus 6. And on the bottom, I can put the length, which is 2. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 176.75. And what I've calculated there is the conductance. And we said that conductance is measured in Siemens. Let's do something similar for resistance. So the formula for resistance here is given by rho, which was that Greek letter, multiplied by L over A. So let's have a similar sort of example here. Let's imagine that we've got another length of wire. And again, I'll make a pretty bad job of drawing it, but there we go. And let's say that this piece of wire also has a given length. So I'll mark that on again as L and a given diameter, D. And let's quote some values just like we did in our last example. Let's say that this is a thinner piece of wire. Um, D is just one millimeter. Let's say that L is a much longer length of 40 meters. And finally, let's say that rho, our resistivity, is 3 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. So given that information, we're going to have a go at working out the resistance. But we run into the same problem again in that we need the area and we're only quoted the diameter. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to calculate area, which we know now is pi r squared. And we're going to do the same kind of thing again. Pi multiplied by r, which again in this example is going to have to be half of the diameter. So that's going to be 0.5 rather than 1 millimeter. And again, in standard form, that's 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. And that calculation comes out as 7.85 times 10 to the minus 7 
meters squared. So knowing that area now, let's go back to our formula for resistance because now we can see that R equals rho, um, which we said was 3 times 10 to the minus 8, multiplied by our length on the top of the fraction now, which was 40. So I'll put a fraction in here, and 40 on the top, over our area, which we've just calculated to be 7.85 times 10 to the minus 7 and calculating that comes out as 1.53 now we know that we've calculated a resistance and the unit of resistance is ohms so 1.53 ohms in this last section of the video um, we're going to look at something called the temperature coefficient because unfortunately things aren't quite as simple as we've made out. We've calculated some conductances and resistances, but the problem is that the resistivity and the conductivity of a substance aren't really constant. We've given some examples, but actually these quantities vary with temperature. And what we're going to do on this last slide here is we're going to look at how temperature affect the resistance of a given substance so what i've done here is i've, I've drawn a graph um, or i've started to at least and this graph is going to represent how resistance changes when we change the temperature so the y-axis of my graph is going to represent resistance and the x-axis is going to represent temperature And we're going to start um, not, at, not at zero, but we're going to start at what we call a reference temperature, which normally is, is around room temperature, um, around 20 degrees. So we're going to put room temperature as our starting point there. Now, what we see in most resistive substances is that the sort of quoted resistance at room temperature actually increases as temperature increases. And so what we're going to do is, let's say that we have a substance that is 10 ohms, for instance, at room temperature. What we find is that as, te as, as uh, temperature increases, the resistance increases. And it does so quite linearly in a, in a straight line. And what we find is that once we reach a higher temperature, we have a higher resistance. So resistance isn't really constant. It depends on the temperature of the environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at calculating the new resistance value, um, which we'll call R in this instance, given this, um, this substance that has a room temperature a resistance of 10 ohms. So to do that we need to define some terms. Uh, the first one is this temperature coefficient which we give the Greek letter alpha. So alpha represents our temperature coefficient. And it's measured in Kelvin which is a unit of temperature, to the minus 1. We also need to define our reference temperature. Reference temperature. And for the sake of our example, we're going to define this um, as room temperature around about 20 degrees. Then we're going to specify what our new temperature is. So we're going to increase the temperature to a new temperature, a higher temperature. So T is going to represent our new temperature. And we also have a reference resistance, R ref, which is the resistance at room temperature. So in my example on the left there, 
the reference resistance would be 10 ohms. So that's the reference resistance, our ref. And it's measured in ohms, of course. And then once we've increased the temperature, we're going to get a new resistance R, which I'm going to call the new resistance. And that's also measured in ohms. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a quick example here. Let's plot another graph, just the same as before, of resistance against temperature. And let's imagine that we have this um, given resistor that we've calculated um, that has a resistance of 10 ohms at room temperature. So there, I'll mark that on, 10 ohms, and here we're at room temperature. And let's say in this example, we're going to increase the temperature to 100 degrees, 100 degrees centigrade. So what we're going to see is as the temperature increases, the resistance of this substance increases. So we're going to see that linear increase in resistance. And the question is, what's the new resistance R that we're going to measure at this point? once we've increased the temperature. So R is what we're calculating. Now we need a um, formula to calculate this. And the formula looks like this. It's R equals R ref, the reference resistance, multiplied by a bracket. And in the bracket, I've got one plus alpha, another bracket, T minus T ref, the reference temperature. And then I'll close both brackets there. So quite a complicated formula. And there's one little bit of information that we don't know, um, which is alpha. So for the purposes of our example, let's say that alpha for our, for our substance here is equal to 0 0.006 Kelvin to the minus 1. So alpha 0 0.006 Kelvin to the minus 1. And we're going to put all of this information into our formula and try and work out the new value of resistance in this case. So let's try that. First of all, R equals R ref. Well, we know that R ref, the reference resistance at room temperature, is 10. Open brackets 1 plus alpha, and we've said that alpha is 0.006. Open brackets, T minus T ref. Well, T was the new temperature. And we said that we're going to increase the temperature to this new temperature of 100 degrees. So 100 minus T ref, which was our reference temperature. And for this example, um, we're going to say that room temperature 20 degrees for our reference temperature, so 100 minus 20, and then close both those brackets. And when I calculate this, I get an answer of 14.8 ohms. So what we're seeing here is that a resistor that has a nominal value of 10 ohms at room temperature, its resistance actually increases as the temperature increases, and by the time we get to 100 degrees, it now has a higher value of 14.8 ohms. That's all for this video on conductance and resistance, and I hope you found it useful.